Hello, good morning, good evening, you know, um, good night, you know, wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to the podcast. I am super excited to have you here listening where are, wherever you are in your kitchen, you know, putting your makeup on, getting ready to go out, you know, taking a walk or stroll in the park to get you some fresh air because 2020 was woo, a lot of inside time, I should say. Um, And so for me, I am going to um, bring you into year 2021 on the podcast because I know that it is very important for me to close up that chapter of 2020 before I just dive straight into 2021. So this morning, I'm going to share with you 10 lessons from 2020. I am super excited to share this with you um, because I have learned a lot and hopefully some of these things are going to help you too to take some inventory of 2020 and what really happened for you personally in 2020 not what happened in the world not what's happened in society but what personally happened for you so I'm going to jump right into that so for me number one listen and these are not in any particular order this is literally how it came out when I just was like what did I learn from 2020 and so there's several other things I could have told you but I picked 10 of them so here we are Number one, community is the bomb dot com. So um, 2020, like I said, there was a lot of things happening in 2020. And every time I turn around and I look back because we are in 2021 and I'm like, wow, how did I make it through those things? Now, of course, God is the source. However, um practically that looks like him using people and so in my life my community looked like my parents my mom and my stepdad my um my siblings my sisters my brothers um my friends like they are the bomb y'all the bomb and if you stay tuned to the podcast I'm not gonna go really deep but I will talk about my community um, I also had I also am a part of a tribe called the Be Free Project and it is not on social, so you will not find them there. Um, it is a private group and it's a group of women who are on a personal development journey and they are like I wish I had the word, but I do not. But if I had to choose a word to be able to describe these women, they are amazing. Like amazing, amazing, amazing. On the days that you're having a good day, they will come on the side of you and they will cheer you on like, go girl, go, you can do it. And then on the days when you're not having a great day, they will hold your arms up for you. It is amazing, y'all. Um, I will go probably more into that as well as I venture onto the podcast. But this this 20, well, 2020, because we are in 2021, 2020 was amazing in the fact that my community showed up y'all and showed out for this little girl right here this little girl this woman because sometimes it was for the little girl that was inside of me but I won't go into that okay so number two practicing health is a payoff with several benefits and I say practicing because I think if we're honest, we don't always do what is healthy. We don't always eat what is healthy. And this lesson um, was very prevalent in 2020 for me because there was things I was doing with my children. Um, I have a daughter and I have a son. And I was doing this with my, like the things that I was practicing with them as far as having them to have my daughter to have vitamins, two different types of vitamins for her to be eating certain foods that you know, when the virus came and all of that, that we were already practicing health. So when they told us to wear the mask, that was a little agitating. However, it wasn't a hard thing for me because we were all already practicing healthy things. And so for me in 2020, I realized that, oh my goodness, practicing things that are healthy is truly a payoff. And the benefits of it was amazing because I was able to tell other people in my family about what we were doing and about how I had been taking care of them. And I was able to teach other people from that. And they were able to like learn some things and realize like, oh, I want to change this or I want to add this to my diet plan or what are those vitamins? Where did you order those from? So before, you know, everything's 
was getting off the shelves, they were able to grab some things for themselves to be able to better take care of their families. So lesson number two is practicing health. It's a payoff with several benefits. Okay. So lesson number three, technology is not all that bad. And for me, the reason I say it that way is because um, I had this really like, um, I guess, love-hate relationship with technology. The love part was like, oh, this is great and beneficial. It's quick and it's um, connecting me to other people and all of these things. And then the, I guess, not so good part of that is that I'm like, we never can catch up with technology. I think that I learned this smartphone that I'm recording this on and I'm like this is an entire speaker this is an entire microphone like speaker a microphone a radio a computer all in one and I'm amazed by that fact however I spend a lot of time on my speaker radio computer phone you know what I mean and so um the thing that I am highlighting here is that technology it's not all bad. It's how we use that technology. And I learned that in 2020 because there was a lot of things that I wouldn't have been able to do. And a lot of people, especially in my community, that I would not have been able to connect to had I not had this technology, such as my cell phone, a laptop. You know, I was able to, to make a friend who is in, she is in a part of, I'm not going to butcher this, but she's in the part of the um, UK. And we were able to have tea. And it was like seven o'clock her, her time, like six o'clock my time. Like it was like seven o'clock night her time. And I think, listen, it was day and night where we were. I was in the daytime and she was at nighttime, but we were having tea at the same time, basically. And I think that is amazing that technology has afforded us that type of connection. And I'm just like, wow, technology is not all bad. It is actually great. So that is lesson number three. Lesson number four from 2020 that is that pure joy is not a natural resource. And what I mean by that is, let me take a sip of water, is that pure joy is not, is not easily attainable and is not um, something that everyone knows how to get a grasp on, if that's the correct word there. Um, phrase that I want to use. And so I learned this because there was a lot of angry people in 2020. And there still are angry people in 2021. But what I'm saying is that pure joy is not something that comes natural to everyone. And I learned that because I thought that everybody had joy. I thought these are just my preconceived notions is that Everybody has access to joy, but not everyone knows how to access it. So maybe that's lesson number four. Everyone has access to joy, but not everybody knows how to obtain that joy. And so I learned that through the angry people at the grocery store, through the angry people at, um, you know, in the world with the social injustices and all of those things. Like, um, like I said, I am... I was like baffled at this, like that joy is not something that everybody knows how to obtain. And so that's another lesson. That's lesson number four. Lesson number five, on being honest with myself is freedom that others get to get the byproduct of. So um, honesty with myself, being honest with myself is freedom that others, they get to benefit from. I learned this in... 2020 because there was a lot of hard truths if I'm honest here that I needed to tell and that I needed to share and um I did and when I did this although it was the truth and I was being honest with myself about where I was and what I needed to say um I in the moment when it felt icky and like oh my goodness how are people going to respond to this um, I realized later on that people would come back and they would tell me, thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for being honest with me. And that was something that I'm like, what do you mean? I try my best to be honest with people. And what I learned that I guess there's a twofold lesson there is that I needed to be more honest with myself as well, because the things that I was sharing with them were hard to share. However, 
they were still the truth. And I was like, okay, if they are responding to me saying these things to them, and this is honesty, then I need to be more honest with myself because I didn't, people are benefiting from this. And I'm all about, (laughs) um, I'm all about progression and I'm all about, you know, change and like things getting better and like improvement of things, especially of myself. And so when people were responding to my honesty in this way, even though in the moment or when I first initially said these, you know, said different things or acted a different way that was honest to who I am, then I was like, oh, this is how people respond to honesty. Oh, people are not honest with people. And so I was like, oh, I need to be more honest with myself. So lesson number five is that when you're honest, and I guess I can put it in y'all's perspective, is that honesty with yourself is freedom that others will benefit from. Okay. So let's then number six, take a sip of water. Once again, lesson number six, God is faithful. I'm going to try my best to not cry here. And if I do, it is what it is. So let's take a deep breath. In the year 2020, there was so much happening so much happening i do not you know probably have to remind you of this because it's some of this thing some of these things are still happening however i am going to remind you there was social injustices happening there was shortages of food clothing i want to say clothing food shelters um medication formula for kids um just it was shortage last year change supposedly there was a shortage of change and then there was also a shortage of joy and there was a shortage of 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 empathy for one another um but there was also an abundant amount of joy there was also an abundant amount of resources for us available and there was also an abundant amount of love and empathy so it was both and there was a lack in certain you know certain people in places and um um, institutions and businesses, but there was also, and there was a plethora of resources and love and empathy and, um, like things for people. And so in all of that, you know, I realized as I sat down to write these things that, that probably, you know, could have been number one, But I wanted to save it for here because I just realized I was like, 2020 tried to take us out of here. And I'm sure you can relate, but God is faithful. Even when, because we lost someone in 2020. We lost someone in my family. We lost my aunt. And that was hard. It was sudden. It was sudden. However, I realized that God is faithful. His Um, his, my aunts had, my aunt had four sons and she still has four sons and they were able, like one of the sons is married. One of the sons, um, is, I am not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. One of the sons lives on his own and the other two were able to go to, um, her siblings home, one being my mom and one being my uncle. And so they are being well taken care of. Everything is well. And I'm sure. And when I say everything is well, meaning that, um, as the eye can see, they're being well taken care of. They're going to be fine. I know that God is going to restore to them the things that they have lost and that they're going to get the love that they need from their, um, I guess this would be my aunt and uncle, their aunt and uncle. And so that's going to be beautiful. And even though it's a hard truth to accept that their mom has passed and, um, and that reality, um, God is still faithful. God is still faithful. And so that was one of the things for me. Okay. Whew. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get through that without crying. Okay. And so, um, when I speak of like the resources, so for my family, we were able to, because my husband had been furloughed from his job 
And I'm not going to go all the way into all of the story. I'll save that for further, you know, future podcasts. However, there was a lot of things that, like, uh, my husband was furloughed. My daughter was in, like, this situation with doctors about her diagnosis. And when I say God is faithful, y'all, like, God is faithful. Um, We were able to get resources to be able to take care of our expenses. My parents were amazing in assisting us and teaching us all things Texas because we had to move. And um, we were able to get this. The, we went without a meal in 2020, even though there were food shortages for food shortages in certain places and for certain people. God is faithful because there was lots of resources that the government provided and um that others were able to provide from their excess that they had and so i think that is beautiful and that goes back to the first thing that i said that community is the bomb um and so and and what i mean by that is like people having things in their position and having an excess were able to give to people who did not have that surplus of resources um so that was another way that God was faithful. God was faithful because none of my my little nuclear family, my, my my husband, my son, my daughter, and myself, none of us um were none of us got sick. And we and I I don't pride myself on that. That is only God because there were people in my family who had gotten sick. There are people that I know that are not necessarily family but in my community had who had gotten sick. And um I am grateful to God for that because there's so much that was already going on and I don't know and um what I I have a idea of how I would have responded, but I am aware that God is faithful. So um, there's so many more stories I could share um, from that. Um, just one phrase, but God is faithful, y'all. God is faithful. And I learned that as lesson number six from 2020. Okay. Lesson number seven, self-care is essential to loving well. I, last year, y'all, I spent a lot of time in the tub at my parents' home, bubble bathing it up, face masking it up. Um, and this is not all what self-care is. Um, but for me, that that being able to be in a tub, soaking and like reading a book, drinking a glass of wine with a side of water with some ice in the side, that was totally me. Also, too, because I didn't get to do that where we were in Virginia. I didn't desire to do it that way there um however i did i did it up at my mom's house drinking out of fancy glasses in the tub um lighting candles in the bathroom like that was one part of the self-care um and that and when i say loving well i'm not just talking about loving myself well i am also talking about loving others well so that's the second part of this this one is also twofold so self care is essential to loving well and so that's one part of the self care aspect but also to taking care of my mind there was i had a couple times to call my therapist um and that was the way that I did self-care. That was amazing to be able to process through some of the things that I was experiencing because I had just had my son in November. And I think, so November, no, October, I'm sorry. I had my son in October. So there was November, December, January. So November, December, January, February. March. So he's about five months old. Um, We moved in February. So there's no, so October, and then there's November, December, January, February. So he's about five months old when all of these things are happening. So I'm still in postpartum and I'm still, you know, going through like my body healing. My body was healed. However, there was still different changes that I was getting used to in my body, different things, you know, getting back in sync, like with my hormones and all of the things. And so self-care was essential for me already but on top of a worldwide pandemic self-care went to a sky high i was like yes calling therapists yes i'm writing this stuff down yes i'm recording myself in my recording myself in my cell phone yes i am reaching out to my community and letting them know this is how you can support me in this season yes i am linking arms with other women and helping them to come on girl we gonna get this for me that's a part of that's a part of the byproduct of taking care of myself well oh uh, and so the other part to this is 
that when I say is is the essential to loving well, is like I was able to love others well because I was loving on myself and taking care of myself. And so in some instances when I was down, the same thing was able to happen to me because my friends were taking care of themselves. And so the other lesson I learned, number seven from 2020, is that self-care is essential to loving well. Lesson number eight from 2020 that I learned is that I've misunderstood my dad for years. So um, last year, I was able to talk to my dad um, several times. We had several conversations where we laughed. We talked about different things in childhood that I didn't understand. Um or that I just had questions about. And he was willing to answer these things for me and talk to me about them and give me some perspective. Now, I am a person who is very introspective naturally. And so I had a lot of reflection that I was already doing. And when I say that I was already doing, it's like within myself, like, girl, I asked myself a lot of questions already. And so, um, when I was able to do this with my dad, um, it was beautiful. It was amazing. And we were, we were able to talk about things and I'm more like my dad than I ever knew. And so, um, what I've, why I say this is that, um, I misunderstood him. It's like, there were some things that people had said about him, some perceptions that I had had about him based on things that were said. And also too, um, there was a period in my life. And if you stay tuned, I will also share this more on further episodes, but that there was different things that I, I had picked up or learned from my dad that were not necessarily directly learned, but indirectly learned. So that gave me some some context for who he was and what he did and um what I mean like where what jobs he worked and you know how he showed up in the world how he showed up for himself how he showed up for the family and so that was um different for me but to be able to have a conversation with my dad and really really talk to him and express my heart really literally put my heart on the line um and my emotions on the line and my reality on the line he basically like boom 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 blew all of it up in a very great way which allowed me to understand him on a different level that I had never understood him on I was like having all of these perceptions that dad was not this awesome amazing loving caring and protective man and he was in his in his capacity, he was that. But as a child and um, the fa- family dynamic we had growing up with my mom and him, birth, you know, having us and never being like, they were um, never like intimate partners in the sense of like more than just having children. Um, that that kind of played different, played out differently in the way that we were able to see mom, the way that we were able to see dad separately from one another and not in a marriage. And so I really hope that that went over well. Um, what I'm basically saying there is that because they never married or, you know, were this thing that we, this like couple that we were able to see growing up, because I was very young um, growing up and they were like dating, but I was so young that I don't remember that. And so um, I had to hear the stories of other people to, you know, give me those memories. And they may or may not be skewed and biased because everybody's experience of them is different. So, yeah, I was able to understand my dad on a different level and I had misunderstood him for several years. So that is lesson number eight from 2020. Lesson number nine from 2020. I love handwritten snail mail. Love, 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 love it. So much so that I wrote my friends letters in a worldwide pandemic because it resulted to that. There were times that, you know, everybody was having their things going on and life was happening for all of us as it always is on top of, you know, the social injustices, on top of, um, you know, like I said, shortages, on top of, you know, quarantining, on top of all of that. And so, I was able to break through and send some light to my friends. I sat down um, specifically, not the same, 
not in the same house I'm in now, but in the same place in the closet. And I pulled out regular paper and I went to work. My pens, my markers, girl, you know, all of the stationary things. And I wrote my friends letters. And so I really enjoyed that. I loved receiving the snail mail and I love giving the snail mail. Um, But I really overall love handwritten snail mail. And I plan to do some of that in 2021 as well. And if you would like to be a recipient of one of those, you can surely send me um a message send me an email and i will send you some snail mail if you're into that type of thing um so yeah i think i said that on a previous podcast nobody took me up on it however i will continue to say it because i love snail mail so that is lesson number nine that was personal lesson number 10 and this one is a little fun and quirky about me but lesson number 10 from 2020 is that mineral water is actually good it's actually good and i have to say it with the t because i did like i want to say it fancy like some people say target and some people say target when you know depending on how much the item costs or whatever i am saying that mineral water is actually good not just good it's good um but um yeah, for real for real mineral water is actually really good um I don't know if it's healthy for you or not healthy. So that's not what I'm saying when I say good. What I'm saying is that I enjoy mineral water. And my favorite mineral water is Topo Chico. Listen, if you want to feel like you are on the back porch drinking the freshest water, the ice cold water where the... um where it's dripping off the sides, you know, because it's so cold and it goes down your esophagus into your whatever, you know, happens there, stomach, and um, refreshes your whole body. And so you want to try a Topo Chico. I am telling you. Let me give you a few. Since this is the last one, I'm going to kind of splurge here. So first of all, Topo Chico comes in um, three different flavors that I am aware of. And if you know another flavor and you hear this, please reach out and let me know because I want to try it. Um, there's grapefruit, there's a lime, and then there's a regular, like, original. The original is really good, I would say, for first-time people. Um, that's probably where you want to start because you, for me, um, it's like people have told me. And people have told me it tastes like carbonated water. And I don't listen to those people because I love Topo Chico's. And so, and I think it is a um i think it is a spanish like name or whatever and maybe for next time i'll look up the actual name of like what it means or whatever but i love them and they come in a glass bottle that bottle the first bottle i just listed or told you about was it's a clear bottle it's like with a red white label i found them in texas i found them at fiesta mark in texas i found them at walmart's also in texas i found them at um they have a what was the name of that store h-e-b literally the letters h-e-b they had them there and then in alabama where i am now they have them in walmart's i've only found them in walmart's and i think winn dixie's and so yeah those are the places that you can find them the the second type of topo chico that i've had is in a green bottle and it is lime i like that one as well more than I like the regular or the next one I'm going to list to you. And so um, the lime one is really good. You can actually add a lime to the regular original if that's what you prefer to kind of give it a taste. Um, because it really doesn't taste it. It really doesn't have a distinct taste more than it gives a, it has a refreshing feel to it when you drink it. So the second, the third one and the last one that I know about is grapefruit. Um, Grapefruit one is really, really different. I like it. It's not my favorite. Um, If I had to list them in favorites, I would say lime original and then grapefruit. Grapefruit is, um, it's got, it's a little, a little taste of grapefruit in it. Um, Just as refreshing. However, if I, you know, if I had to choose and the grapefruit was the only one in the store, I still would pick that Uh, just because I love mineral water. I like them because you can taste the, the, the richness of the water or whatever the food is that you're eating. You can keep those taste on your taste buds because this doesn't like, like if you're drinking a Coke with that's sugary, 
and you're drinking, you're eating chocolate. I think they kind of cancel each other out. They collide because there's two different types of sugar. So when you drink, so I say like if you're when you have a Topo Chico, it's bet like it's really good with Mexican food. I love Mexican food, but it's really good with Mexican food. It's really good. It's really good with anything. But what I'm especially like spaghetti too, because that's very acidic. And so um, when it's lots so of it's good with Thai, listen, it's good with everything. But I love it especially with Thai food. I love it especially with um, um, Mexican food like tacos, enchiladas, um, tostadas. I love that with that, and I also love it with um, with like spaghetti because it's very acidic, and that topo chico going down kind of like breaks up some of that um, that uh, tomatoey taste, like the acid that's in the tomato paste. And so yeah, but anyways, that is all of the things for the ten lessons from twenty twenty. I'm going to do a quick recap, and then I am going to wrap this episode up. So, lesson number one from that I learned in twenty twenty is that community is the bomb. Lesson number two is practicing health is a payoff with several benefits. Lesson number three is technology has its benefits. Like technology is not all bad. Lesson number four is pure joy is not a natural resource. And then the twofold thing there was that pure joy, everybody has an, has access to joy. However, not everyone knows how to access that joy. Lesson number five, honesty with myself is freedom that others get the byproduct of. Lesson number six is that God is faithful. Lesson number seven, self-care is essential to loving well, loving yourself well and loving others, being able to love others well. Lesson number eight that I learned from 2020 is I've mister I've misunderstood my dad for years. Lesson number nine from 2020 that I learned is that I love, love, love handwritten snail mail. I love to receive it and I love to um give it. Lesson number 10 is mineral water is good. And when I say good, I literally mean that it's refreshing. Um I'm not talking about how healthy or unhealthy that it may be. Mineral water is good. Okay? So those are the 10 lessons that I learned from 2020. I hope that you have enjoyed this and got a laughter out of some of the things but also felt the seriousness of those things that I've shared that were um, a little bit more serious than mineral water being good. So um, I will hear, I will talk to you very soon in episode number, yeah, I will talk to you very soon.